Hello friends, welcome to X Amity and Smithy Notes for Biotechnology. This lecture is the continuation of the previous one in which we studied haploid production, embryo culture rescue and protoplast culture. So let's start with somatic hybridization also known as protoplast fusion because we obtain it from protoplast fusion. It is basically the development of hybrid plants through fusion of somatic protoplast of two different species. It is useful for hybridization between species or genera which cannot be made to cross by conventional method. We use somatic hybridization. This is the technique somatic hybridization first we isolate the protoplast and then fuse the protoplast of desired species then we identify and select the somatic hybrid cells and then culture those cells and those are ready for regeneration of hybrid cells this is in detail explained about those five steps which i have mentioned in previous slide about the technique of hybridization and protoplast fusion can be achieved by spontaneous or mechanical methods. We will study about them later. The most widely used method for protoplast fusion is polyethylene glycol. I have drawn the diagram and shown how two protoplast fuses by using fusogen and the treatment. They fuse together by addition and the fused protoplast forms a heterokine which forms the hybrid. The isolation of protoplast can be done by two methods that is mechanical and enzymatic. Fusion of protoplast is done by two techniques that is spontaneous and induced. Identification and selection of hybrid cells gives two types that is homocarion and heterocarion and then we culture the hybrid cells and they are ready to be regenerated. Now we will look into the techniques that is spontaneous and induced fusion. For protoplast fusion, as the isolated protoplasts are devoid of cell wall, so it becomes easy to fuse the cell wall. In spontaneous fusion, the formation, the frequency of formation of homocarion formation is really high in protoplast isolated from dividing cultured cells. In induced fusion, freshly isolated protoplasts can be fused by induction. Several agents used are NaNO3, high pH, calcium, polyethylene glycol, lysosome and so on. So, fusogens are used to induce the protoplast formation. Electrofusion is one such method in which electric field is used for protoplast fusion. The protoplasts are placed in culture vessel with micro electrodes. This is simple, quick and efficient. I have shown in the diagram. Now we will look into the mechanism of fusion that is done in three phases. That is agglutination, plasma membrane fusion and then formation of heterocarions. When two protoplasts come in close contact with each other, they adhere to each other with the help of fusogens like PEG or high pH and high calcium. I have shown in the diagram, you can look into the diagram again. The plasma membrane gets fused and this leads to the formation of a bridge. And these fused protoplasts become rounded and lead to formation of heterocarion. So we have done two steps that is isolation and fusion in detail. Now the third step is selection of hybrid cells and their identification. In which the fused protoplasts are differentiated from unfused protoplasts. And this can be done by various techniques like biochemical methods, visual method or cytometric method. The third step that is identification in which the morphology of hybrid plants intermediate between two parents can be identified and those characters can be considered like leaf shape, flower shape, size and these can be of two types that is symmetric hybrids and asymmetric hybrid. After identification the hybrids are ready to be cultured and regeneration of hybrid cells takes place. This is the summary of overall what we have studied for somatic hybridization. 
now we will look into the limitation and advantages limitations is somatic hybridization does not always produced fertile and viable seeds it may lead to genetic instability and production of unfavorable hybrids as well now somatic hybridization has various applications it can be used in various fields like creation of hybrids with disease resistance environmental tolerance and also quality characters like high nicotine content so this was all about somatic hybridization a six marker question comes in detail write your answer with that. next topic is hybrids hybrids are basically plants that contain nucleus of one species but cytoplasm from both the parental species it has various applications it is used for sexually incompatible combination importance in medical and crop plants as well transfer of plasma genes from one to nuclear background of other basically the phenomena of formation of hybrids in which nucleus of one plant and cytoplasm of both the plant is taken is known as hybrid this is the diagram showing the formation of hybrids hybrids are important for cytoplasmic male sterility they are help to transfer antibiotic and herbicide resistance they are also used in mitochondrial research next is triploid production that means a tetraploid and a diploid fuse together to form a triploid that is 4n and 2n together form 3n they are basically used for making seedless fruit and is a product of double fertilization it is the fusion of three haploid nuclei the cultured endosperm retains the ability to support the growth of young embryos it is seen in watermelon plants as well the production of triploids that is double fertilization occurs in majority of individual except in families of orchidaceae and trapeziae this results in two fusion products that is the zygote and the triploid primary endosperm the zygote gives rise to embryo and later forms the endosperm example aspergillus rice and maize plants produced by such method are self sterile and usually seedless they are important for forest industry the last topic for this lecture is soma clonal variation that means the variation seen in plants that are produced in plant tissue culture the variation can be in the form of chromosomal rearrangements the characters affected include both quantitative and qualitative traits common in plants regenerated from callus it can be genotype and epigenetic and the gen uh, genetic alterations are basically seen in chromosome number chromosome structure and change in the dna structure when we say variation can be genetic that means pre existing variation in somatic cells and they are caused by mutation and has a high frequency and when we say variation can be epigenetic that means variation during plant tissue culture and they have low frequency the genetic variation found in in vitro cellular cells are collected referred to as soma clonal variation and the plants obtained are called as soma clones it is useful in finding crop improvement and production of mutants and variants and in the case if the variant have been obtained from gametophyte origin such a pollen is called as gametoclonal variation soma clonal variation have been used in plant breeding programs it has various applications like development and production of plants disease resistant biochemical mutants and bio 13 now let's look at the procedure for isolation the very first step is screening which involves observation of large number of cells and detection of variants when we obtain a good yield we call it as p1 that is progeny first generation and then again we go for identification and then we obtain the p2 generation and they are evaluated for confirmation then we select the cells that is cell selection 
cells which are resistant to diseases are selected so that the mutant cells are able to survive or divide and it is called the selection process it has various advantages and disadvantages as well in advantages we can see they are stable they have high frequency new alleles can be isolated whereas in disadvantages only selected clones are used and they are unstable undesirable features like reduced fertility and growth rate can also be seen so we are done with this module now if you have any further doubts do comment and let me know if you don't understand any word or sentence do let me know and do not forget to like share and subscribe thank you